Hey, I'm Ben, one of the chefs at Sorted Food, and today I'm going to show you two ways to make pesto. A fairly classic version, and then a version that takes the same kind of concept and rules to apply it to a cheaper version that you can do at home, even if you don't have anything other than a knife and a chopping board. So we know the classic pesto, essentially an Italian pounded sauce, vibrant green and full of basil. It's just five ingredients. One of those ingredients we'll start with is pine nuts. What I'm going to do is toast these pine nuts in a dry pan just to give them a wonderful extra note of nuttiness. Just a few minutes tossing occasionally. Once they're toasted, you have to let them cool down. In the meantime, other ingredients, garlic, a very small clove or half a big clove. You don't want too much raw garlic because it can be quite fiery, especially if you're gonna make a batch of pesto that will last a long time in the fridge. It will get even more fiery as you keep it in the fridge. Next ingredient to look at is the cheese. So a salty, hard Italian cheese. This is Parmesan. I'm just gonna chop it up a bit smaller to give it a chance. Keep an eye on your nuts. You're looking for that gold, don't you, Snigger? You're looking for that golden colour and you begin to smell it. It smells almost like popcorn. Now, when it comes to quantities, there is a recipe, I'm sure. For me, I like to go by eye and by hand. And by that, I mean there are five ingredients and you want about a handful of toasted pine nuts, a handful of chopped or grated parmesan, a handful of fresh basil. Much more difficult to measure a handful of oil, but I cut, literally, I mean, like, if you were to hold it in a hand, it's about that much. And just a little pinky little bit of garlic. Not, not a hand for that one, just pinky. And with that in mind, it doesn't matter how big or small your hands are, it should still work. So the handful of toasted pine nuts cooled into the food processor, along with a handful of Parmesan and your pinky of garlic. Now, I'm using a food processor because it's quicker and it's easier and we've got one. Traditionally, it would be pestle and mortar, but if you wait until the second recipe I'll show you in a bit, you don't need either. Pine nuts, Parmesan pulse. At this point, you're just pulsing it to a crumb. You don't need it to turn into a paste or anything. Just gets the nuts and the cheese nice and small, ready for the basil. At this point, a generous handful of fresh basil. For me, I like to take the stalks off, but throw them in the next tomato sauce you're making or something like that because they have incredible flavour, just not quite right for this. It's the leaves you want. Blitz it up again, and once the basil and cheese nut mixture is combined, you're gonna slowly dribble in the oil. This is olive oil, but I've deliberately gone for half olive oil and half extra virgin olive oil. Personally, I think if you just use extra virgin, it's quite strong and it can overpower some of the fragrance and the nuttiness of the pesto, but it's up to you. And I'll give you another oil option later. So that is the consistency that we're looking for. It's basically emulsified the three different fats. The fats from the nuts, the fats from the cheese, and the fats from the oil, and they all come together with the herb and the garlic, and you end up with this. Now, we've not yet seasoned it, but Parmesan is quite salty, so wait until now to have a taste, and then adjust salt and pepper to your preference. I'm adding a little bit of salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. Not everyone likes pepper, because sometimes the basil can be quite peppery, but up to you and that will keep in the fridge, covered for at least a week, and you can use it for countless things. It is great with grilled chicken, it is great with grilled fish, it's great to toss through salads and roasted vegetables. I'm gonna show you a really quick crostini. Light lunch or beautiful aperitivo, some char-grilled ciabatta, this is an olive one. Topped with pesto. Sun-dried tomatoes. And some torn mozzarella. Damn simple, super delicious, light lunch, aperitivo, or put that on top of some beautiful warm lentils. Dinner sorted. Oh, I've not said sorted like that for a while. <laughs> Now you understand my handy tip, recipe number two. Now the thing is, pine nuts and parmesan, relatively expensive. So this next version uses more affordable ingredients in the UK, but once you get the idea, you can use whatever flavors you want from wherever you are. Same rules as before, 
Instead of a handful of pine nuts, a handful of walnuts. I'm still gonna toast them off. Walnuts, cob nuts, super seasonal in the autumn and winter in the UK, but equally, they could be pecan nuts, they could be macadamia, they can be whatever you want them to be that's affordable and tasty or that you have in your store cupboard. Little pinky of garlic, that hasn't changed. Cheese, use your favorite cheese, use the one you've got in the fridge, or go and get one specially for it, but it should be a firm cheese. So like a Parmesan, not soft like a Camembert or a Brie or a goat's cheese. You want something that'll either crumble or chop. This is a Cheshire cheese. Not as firm as a Parmesan, but still possible to kind of slice and crumble. And again, a handful. Whilst we wait for the nuts to toast off and cool, move on to the next one, the green stuff. Instead of fresh basil, use whatever fresh green thing you like. This is watercress, British watercress. It's wonderful, it's peppery, it's leafy. Just as before, I'm gonna take off the stalks. You could also use rocket. You could also use kale. If you do, you might wanna blanch it briefly. Or you could just use loads and loads of parsley or dill or mint, whatever herb you like. And just like before, I'm gonna give it a bit of a head start. This time, not a head start for the food processor, but a head start for my chopping board because that's how we're gonna do this one, by hand. Forgive me for repetition, but it helps me remember things. Look, a handful of nuts, a handful of green leaves, a handful of cheese, and a little pinky of garlic. The oil in this instance comes at the end because we're gonna do it on the board. So rather than food processor, rather than pestle and mortar, just chop it all through with a board and a knife, and you'll have the basis of your pesto. And here we come to the definition of pesto. Pesto comes from pesta, which literally means to pound. So yes, the first one we blitzed and this one we're chopping, but it's the same principle. And this means that anyone can do it. On a chopping board with a knife, you have a version that you can do. And if you don't even want to do the green, herby, leafy option, you could even sub that out for something like roasted red peppers. Right now, we've got a version on the Millpacks app that uses a red pepper pesto, same method, and you use it a couple of times throughout the week, and you can go and check that out for free for a month, if you haven't already. Essentially, keep going until you've got a really, really fine crumb, and then transfer it to a bowl where you're gonna add your handful of oil. In this instance, I'm using rapeseed oil rather than olive oil, but again, use one that you like, one that you have, and one that's got a little bit of flavour, but isn't too overpowering. It was a handful. Add the oil, stir it up, and there you have it. Slightly coarser by hand, but just as delicious. And that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. Season to taste. I'm gonna tell you that little pinky of raw garlic goes a long way, nice warmth. Are so good. It's so different to the pesto you know, and yet it's the same concept, the same rule, and you can use it in pretty much the same way. It just gives you a nice twist. And this one, I'm just gonna toss through some pan-fried pumpkin gnocchi, little splash of water, turns it into a gorgeous sauce, and plate it up with more fresh watercress. And there we go, two versions of the same pesto concept. Just remember the handy rule, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And if you want to put your new pesto skills to the test, then don't forget to check out our Meal Packs app. Basically, an effortless way to absolutely nail midweek cooking. Smart, savvy recipes that taste delicious, they get the wow, and they save you money on your weekly shop. Right now, you can try it for a whole month for free. Aren't we nice? We've plugged the app, should we plug a hole? I'm hungry. Tuck in. Here we go. Let's try this pumpkin gnocchi. That is spectacular. That's so simple. That is spectacular. On a cold, wet evening, there's nothing you want more than a bowl of that. Yeah, to remind you of a place that's a lot sunnier. <laughs> that does not taste any cheaper than the classic version. It's as delicious. Mm-hmm.